and welcome to our next section here in derivative free optimization algorithm. So this is a really very, very, very simple session here. In a certain sense, we could do this uh, just in one or two slides and in a few minutes, and I guess in, um, this is, um, and we will not do much more than this. So here we'll, I will introduce a, a multi-start optimization as a, a really simple and naive, but still fairly useful wraparound procedure so we can turn um, local iterative procedures into more of a uh, uh, somewhat global optimization procedure. It basically just means um, yeah, starting our um, iterative local optimization procedure a couple of times from um, random or different uh, starting points uh, and then returning the best value. That's basically it. So we'll talk a bit about multimodal functions, kind of give a um, definition of what we mean by an area of Bassin of attraction and uh, yeah, then have a look at this uh, multi-star pr procedure basically on an example. Uh, like I said, this is it's really easy to explain, but uh, it's, a, um, it's a worthwhile um, uh, trick that you ha should have in your belt of tools. Okay, so um, let's start. Um, so far, we have basically introduced optimization methods, which are mainly geared towards unimodal objective functions. Yeah, so they converge to some local minimum. And we have, uh, if you have a uni, if you have a multimodal function, most of this stuff will not work anymore. Well, will converge to a local minimum, but not to um, anything that's that's globally good. Which means, um, if we are unlucky, and if our function maybe I don't know looks like I don't know this, yeah, and we start here. We can converge here and this distance here to the true global optimum can be arbitrarily bad. Um, and of course, these optima, these minima that we find, they will in general depend, um, now of course, on the algorithm that we're running, but also on the uh, starting value x0 that we choose. And the basic exception for one algorithm that could also escape from uh, local minima was similar annealing talked a bit also about escaping minima when we discuss uh, gradient descent and momentum and so on, but uh, momentum is more a technique kind of escaping saddle points than really escaping um, local minima uh, in more strongly multimodal functions. Now we can also define what we mean by a bassin of attraction or an attraction area. That's something fairly simple. So um, if we are given um, um, a bunch of local minima or a certain, maybe let's say we're giving a certain local minima of an algorithm, um, then the um, bassin of attraction for an algorithm A is called all of the points that if we start from these points uh, by applying our iterative local procedure A to that starting point and then we converge to that specific given local uh, minimum. Okay. So I guess it makes more sense to visualize this. So here's a 1D example, which is maybe a little bit underwhelming. Um, um, so you can see here two of these uh, uh, yeah, the signs of attraction, two of these local minima. So if we would start from a point like this, converge here, start from a point like this, would also converge here. So we have marked now all points in blue, which would convert to this local minimum. Um, this was here. I actually computed this with, by running Nedamid on this. Um, in order to draw this uh, thing here, but I guess uh, for basically nearly every iterative local procedure that I could imagine, um, the colorization would look the same. And a point like this would converge here, a point like this would converge here as well. So this is just kind of, I'm not even sure whether we kind of read, really need this formal definition, but um, uh, this is just kind of be able to um, talk about these percents of attraction um, um, yeah, yeah, to kind of mathematically define this concept so we can later on deal more with this. Um, now, what's the multi-star procedure? I've basically explained this already, right? So um, let's assume we would not do any multi-stars and we would have a strongly multimodal function. So here we have this weird guy here made up of all of these uh, sinusoidal parts. Um, combined like this. It doesn't really matter. This is the uh, so-called Levy function. And we are now running the BFGS method uh, in R on this. And we'll pick 
some starting value in this um, in this square here which goes from minus 2 to plus 2 in x1 and x2. So we just pick some random, random starting value, we run our BFGS and the load local convergence and then we note down the optimal point that we have found. And we run this uh, 100 times. And for this mathematical test function we know where the global minimum is, it's at the, at the point 1 comma 1 and it should have an objective value of zero. Well, it should not only have that objective value, it has that objective value. And um, yeah, because that's the global minimum, every uh, other point um, um, yeah, has a non-zero uh, objective value, and the higher it is, um, the less successful, I guess, we were in our uh, PFGS run. And here you can see the distribution of our uh, 100 uh, optimization results in terms of their Y values after BFGS has locally converged. And you can see that yes, sometimes we find that global minimum, uh, as you can see here from this um, uh, uh, minimum statistics from the distribution of the Y value. So sometimes we reach that, um, but very, very often we do not. Uh, and sometimes we are pretty, pretty far away um, from that optimal point. Now, what can we easily do now? Just write ourselves a simple kind of meta wrap around procedure where we take our optimization algorithm, we draw a random starting point from our um, region of interest, you know, from our usually box constrained search space. Um, we run our optimization algorithm, we um, store the uh, local x and the local y value, and at the end, we return the best of all of these um, from these k runs that we perform uh, so far. So simple. Um, this usually works quite well if the function is only, let's say, slightly multimodal. Um, and, yeah, and if we have enough budget to run the algorithm um, a bunch of times, um, here in this example, and you can even um, see the code here, um, or you can write this in R, you can also write this uh, in Python. Yeah, this is kind of just a bunch of lines of code. And if um, on your function, your iterative procedure works quite well. You still want to, I don't know, um, exploit the fact that you can compute gradients here. You know that the function is only slightly modal, anti-modal. This can be a good initial idea. Uh, and you can also see here that if we do this now for 20 times and we allow ourselves 20 restarts of BFGF, um, we basically reach that uh, global optimum quite um, perfectly.